This week's News 6 program is being presented by Bigelow Hill School, located in northwest section of Finley, Ohio. The sixth grade teachers are Mrs. Barb Risser and Mrs. Shirley Gerber. Principal Jerry Ross says the enrollment is 348 students from kindergarten through grade 6. Here with our first story is Missy Dunn. This year in the Finley City Schools, there is a new program. Two Finley City policemen and a state highway patrolman are coming to the schools to visit. These law enforcement officers are on the playground and in the classroom to answer children's questions and explain what their jobs are. We interviewed Mr. Ronald Strunk with the State Highway Patrol, and here's that report. I uh, entered the State Highway Patrol Academy in 1965, so I've been with the Highway Patrol for 14 years now. Have you been a police officer out of the state of Ohio? No, as a matter of fact, I was never interested in law enforcement until I came to the state of Ohio. What do you like about your work? I find it very interesting. There are many different things about the job that make it interesting. Each day, for instance, when I go to work, uh, I never know what to expect. Each day is different. It might be snowing. There might be a bad accident. It could be a kidnapping. It's hard to say what's going to happen. It's always different. What do you use your radar for? The radar, I guess, you could describe as being used for two things. Number one, it's used to catch people who are speeding in Ohio's highways. The second, probably, thing that comes into existence is that it's a deterrent. And what, by that I mean, the people know we have these pieces of equipment that can check their speed. And as a result, we hope that in itself will slow some of Ohio's drivers down. We also interviewed officers Roddy and Routson of the Finley City Police Department. What did you have to do to become a policeman? You have to do uh, an application. You have to fill out an application the same as you do for any other job. Then you have to take a physical examination by a doctor. You also uh, take a physical examination uh, for agility. You run and you jump and you tumble, all sorts of things. Then you take a written examination to see if you've got enough education or, or you know, uh, knowledge to do the job. And after that, then you're interviewed and uh, after you're investigated by the department to make sure you haven't done something wrong yourself in the past, then you, if you score highest on the test, then you're appointed to a job. Do you use your guns a lot? No. Uh, that's not to say that we wouldn't. Uh, we don't like using our guns. I had to use my gun just three days ago. Uh, our reasoning is guns are made to alter things living things or even material things uh, when you shoot that gun no matter what you shoot it at it's going to change it some way whether it's a living being or whether it's even a solid object that it was created by either man or somebody else to be a certain way and by shooting that gun it alters it this has been sally martin for news six reporting from bigelow hill elementary school in finley turning now to sports we have a story about the finley college football team Finley College Oilers were recently ranked number one in the nation for small colleges, led by All-Americans quarterback Paul Trina, wide receiver Rick Hatfield, and running back Nelson Bolden. The team has had many good seasons. According to Coach Strom, who has been with the Oilers for five seasons, when you're number one, the Oilers or the others or the teams are there to get you. If the Oilers pull through every game, they will again make it to the NAIA quarterfinals, which will be held on November 17th. If they win then, they go to the semifinals on December 1st and from there to the finals December 8th. Nelson Bolden is the Oilers' leading rusher and has made the NAIA record book with the most rushing attempts in one game, 40. Bolden can be counted on in pressure situations. Finley College's leading receiver is Rick Hatfield, wide receiver. He is the best receiver in the Hoosier Buckeye Collegiate Conference. The Oilers were rated number two in the nation and went as far as the NAIA championship playoffs. They lost to Concordia, Minnesota, 7 to nothing. Before that, they de defeated Missouri Valley and Tarleton State in Texas. Coach Thomas Finley is winning his coach with a record of 25 wins, 14 losses, and one tie. According to Strom, the Oilers have improved with each practice. Coach Strom said, everyone on this team hustles or they don't play. Now we'll hear about Beatrix Bunny from Bigelow, reported by Kim May. In our sixth grade classroom, we have a very unique bunny. Our unusual pet is a female rabbit by the name of Beatrix. She is a Netherlands dwarf and has soft brown fur. Beatrix eats rabbit pellets, hay cubes, carrots, and small pieces of apple. 
Every other week, two sixth graders clean out her cage and give her clean water. They feed her, too, daily. She loves to roam the classroom before school begins and gets her exercise this way. When Beatrix gets excited, she jumps on top of her box and starts chewing on it. But most of the time, she is quiet. When she gets off her box, she starts eating and drinking. When we first received her from a local rabbit farm, she was really small. She has grown now and is very enjoyable. Let's hear about a newsy item about metrics next from Scott or from Missy. There is a new way to measure things in America. It is called the metric system. The metric system is based on tens. The system is used in most countries around the world. It was discovered in the country of France by scientists in the 1790s. Here is how the metric measurements work. 10 millimeters equal 1 centimeter, 100 centimeters equal 1 meter, and 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer. These units are similar to our mile, inches, and feet. You can use liter and milliliters to measure liquid. To measure weight, you use gram and kilograms. Even though the United States Congress passed a law in 1866 legalizing the metric system, America has been slow to use it. We are using metrics in math and in science and find it a much quicker way to measure. At Central Junior High School in Finley, a science and math teacher are showing the relationship between the two areas. They are trying to prepare students for their metric age. The students are catching on quickly and the teachers hope to prove that with increased study it will, be, it will become more easier. In the 1980 Olympics, metric measurements will be used. It may cause some minor problems now, but in the long run, metrics will make measuring easier. Another method of using math is the computer, as Scott Wyckoff tells us. Some of the kids in grades 6 through 9 are going to college. As a part of Finley's Saturday Morning Enrichment Series, the students are going to Finley College Weekly. One of the courses they're taking is a computer course. They play games and put information into the computers. They also are learning how to program a computer. The instructor is Mr. Siders. He has taught the students the parts of the computer, such as the memory, such as the short memory, long memory, and the control center. The computer terminals have games. In order to play a game, you have to type hello to the terminal and enter the password. Then you type in the game number. Mr. Siders is in charge of the com college computer center. He enjoys teaching, and that is why he teaches his Saturday morning enrichment course. Most people enjoy animals, but not everyone cares for them properly, as we hear from Kim. A German Shepherd dog with its legs bound together with chicken wire was found at Riverbend Recreation Area in Marion Township near Finley, Ohio. The wire, which bound the dog's legs for three or four days, mutilated the tissue down to the bone on all four limbs and caused the blood to stop flowing through the legs. Two of the dog's legs had gangrene and the other two had severed tendons. Similar cases of cruelty have occurred throughout the county and when people are caught they pay a fine and court costs. Although cruelty and abandonment of animals can be prosecuted under Ohio law, generally these occurrences never reach the courts, according to Hancock County Humane Officers. If anyone has information about animals being abandoned or abused, call the local dog pound or the Humane Society. Our final story concerns the ancient Egyptians as told by Scott. We're learning about ancient Egypt and the Egyptians in our technology class. We're learning how they made pyramids. The biggest pyramid is the Great Pyramid. King Cheop ordered them to be built it for him. It took thousands of men 20 years to build this. The pyramids were burial grounds for great kings. When these great kings died, the Egyptians believed that since there was life after death, jewels, eating utensils, and other possessions for the next world should be buried with them. When archaeologists found these pyramids, they looked to see if there were jewels or any other possessions there. Sometimes tomb robbers had arrived before the archaeologists, so many of the items had been stolen. They were out of luck. There are all kinds of pyramids. One is called the Staircase Pyramid. The Egyptians thought the pyramid would lead them to heaven. Sometime later, they invented a slanted pyramid. No one knows exactly why this was done. Each block of the pyramid varied in weight from 2.5 to 16 tons. This week's News 6 came from Bigelow Hill in Finley, Ohio. Next week's program is from St. Gerard in